Is it possible that you're pushing good, strong Christian men away from you because you're unknowingly projecting a masculine vibe? Yes, this is very possible. So here are five things you need to watch out for so you're not inadvertently doing this. Number one, if you're fighting for his respect rather than embracing his love, you're projecting a masculine vibe. First off, you can't force someone to love you or respect you. So if you're fighting for this and he's not just giving it to you anyway, then that's the first problem in this type of dynamic. But to take a step back, before we talk about the emphasis of love and respect for women and men, let's just first lay the biblical foundation that both of these are obviously required for both partners in the relationship. Women should love and respect their husband and a husband should love and respect his wife. So these emphasis in scripture don't mean that a man can be disrespectful as long as he's loving and a woman can be unloving as long as she's respectful. The baseline is always there because Christians are supposed to be loving and respectful to all people. But there's an emphasis in scripture, particularly in Ephesians 5, 22 through 33, because God has wired men and women differently, and thus the way that we receive love and respect needs to be offered in a different way with a different emphasis. For example, a woman will feel loved when a man protects her and provides for her. A man, however, doesn't want to be protected and provided for by a woman because that's his job. Rather, he wants his wife to be happy and respect him for being a good man to her. All that to say, if you're fighting for equality is resulting in you requiring sameness, then you're inadvertently projecting masculinity and requiring him to be feminine because sameness deludes both of the roles and basically causes both of you to not accomplish your role. So you're not both accomplishing both roles. Really, neither of you are accomplishing either roles. And so a man, a godly man wants to be with a woman who wants to play the feminine role because he wants to play the masculine role. He doesn't want to compete with a woman who's trying to do his job. Number two, if you're valuing your career over motherhood, you will be pushing masculine men away from you. I didn't say that it's wrong for you to value a career, and I'm not making the statement or law that it's a sin for a woman to work. For example, the Proverbs 31 woman did produce income. Verse 16, she considers a field and buys it. With the fruit of her hands, she plants a vineyard. However, I do believe the biblical role of motherhood requires the woman in that role to prioritize the health of her ch children over the health of her career. A godly man won't want to be with a woman like this because he doesn't need a woman like this. He knows he needs a woman to do the things he can't do, like be a mother. He doesn't need a woman to do the things he knows he can do, like be a father and provider and protector. Number three, if you're presenting yourself to the man as a problem to be solved, rather than as a piece to be pursued, then you are projecting a masculine vibe and pushing good men away from you. Now, a couple clarifications. Of course, as Christians, we can only find our ultimate peace in God. But in secondary relationships, like a husband and wife and man to woman, there are good blessings like peace that you can find in each other in a secondary type of way that are healthy. And a good man should be in tune with a woman's needs. So I'm not saying she can't present a need and him try to solve that need or fix that issue. This isn't ultimately a wrong or unattractive thing to do when it's needed. But that type of thing is different than presenting yourself as a high maintenance woman who sees herself as his problem that he needs to solve. So you may fall into this category if you use labels like a boss chick or a sassy lady, or if you say things like, well, I'm just too much for most men to handle. Many women wear these titles as a badge of honor, but the only one applauding is their girlfriends. The godly men you want sees these titles as red flags to avoid. Why? Because men's jobs, what they do for income, 
is basically be a problem solver. So a huge part of his life is devoted to solving problems. That's what he does. So he goes out into the world, he's confronted with issues all day, and that's what he's required to do. And he, I'm not saying he hates it, but that's just his job. That's his requirement. And so when he comes home, he doesn't want you to be equated with work. At best, if you present yourself in this high maintenance, needy type of way, you'll be seen as a feminine headache and he'll avoid that. Or at worst, he'll see you as a masculine headache and still avoid you. Don't seek to be another problem he needs to solve. Rather, add peace to his life. He will enjoy you then and want to pursue you. As Proverbs 31, 10, 12 states, an excellent wife who can find, she is far more precious than jewels. The heart of her husband trusts in her and he will have no lack of gain. She does him good and not harm all the days of her life. Number four, if you're treating your own body like a worldly man treats his own body by sleeping around, you're presenting yourself as masculine and pushing strong, godly men away from you. Now, the feminist movement did some good things in that it pointed out the double standard sexually that has historically occurred between the sexes. As we generally know, it's not as frowned upon for men to sleep around, whereas it's much more frowned upon for women to do that. And the feminist movement pointed that out and that was healthy. However, they went the wrong way by offering a bad unbiblical solution and said, well, the solution is for women to also sleep around, to also live in this sexually perverse way. So the biblical solution to this double standard that is very real in many places is not to give women the free pass to also sleep around, but rather to require men to have a biblical standard of sexual ethics and not sleep around, not have premarital sex. And while it's true that Christian men need to hold other Christian men accountable when it comes to this double standard, Really, probably the bigger issue is that women need to hold men accountable to this double standard. They need to stop giving men the pass to sleep around if they don't want this double standard to be there. So one reason for this double standard is because Christian men act on their concerns and don't date women who sleep around. Christian women, however, don't often hold men to the same standard and often will date men who sleep around. Men care about a woman's sexual history, but a lot of women don't care as much about a man's sexual history. That's one big reason there's a double standard. Men hold women accountable, but women don't hold men accountable. They just date worldly men and accept their sin and get dragged into sexual sin by these worldly men. Of course, that's a generalization. I'm not saying every one of you watching this video is doing that. Some women do hold men accountable and aren't going to date a guy who's sleeping around. But generally, there's a general double standard in the Christian community because women aren't as severe in not dating a man who's living that way. Long story short, if you are sleeping around, if you are treating your body like a worldly man treats his own body, then it can't be a surprise if a godly man sees you in a masculine way. And number five, if you're trying to teach a man spiritually or be his spiritual mentor, eventually he's going to see you in a masculine light. A woman can be a very strong spiritual encouragement to a man, but she should not be his spiritual leader, teacher, or mentor. And if you are taking on this role, which often occurs a lot because a Christian woman sees a guy who, who she thinks has potential, but he's just not following God. So she tries to help him in that way. And sometimes is even a little successful and he starts listening. The problem with that, there's many problems with that, but relationally the problem with that is that this puts you in a masculine role in his life because a man needs other men to mentor him and disciple him. And so when you are that person, you're going to eventually be seen in a masculine light in his eyes. Here are five things a woman can do to be attractive to a godly man 
And this comes from the book of Ruth. It's, a, it's the first part in a series through the book of Ruth, which you might really enjoy. I'm Mark from applygodsword.com. Until next time, God bless.